Hello and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Um, my name is Jessica Zavala, and it is my pleasure to welcome you on behalf of the Ohio Program for Campus Safety and Mental Health to today's webinar, What the Launch of 988 Means for Crisis Care. Um, before I introduce our presenter today, I do have a few brief announcements to share. Uh, first and foremost, CME and CEU credits, excuse me, are available. Uh, the activity code for today's session is 36 FRIG. That is 36 F R I G. This code will expire on tomorrow, April 26 at 1 p.m. Please be on the lookout for information periodically posted via the chat function regarding how to obtain CME and CEU credits. Uh, next, I just want to say that we thank you for your continued participation in these monthly webinars, and it is our role as a dissemination center to ensure we are providing accurate and relevant information related to mental wellness and suicide prevention resources. We also thank you, or we do thank you for staying tuned to any of our future webinars and presentations. And actually next month on May 21st at 1 p.m., the Coordinating Centers of Excellence will collaborate for the Drs. Fred and Penny Freeze lecture, Community Building, Community Building and Collaboration Among Students with Psychosis. Uh, Cecilia McGough, who is the founder and exec executive director for Students with Psychosis, will be our feature presenter. And then on May 12th at 2 p.m., we will host our final campus community chat, recognizing and responding to a first episode of Psychosis. So please be on the lookout for details via our listserv and social media sites for upcoming chats and training opportunities. We encourage you to post questions and or comments for today's webinar in the Q&A and or chat function. And finally, this webinar will be recorded and the video will be made available for viewing on our YouTube channel. And now to introduce our presenter. Stacy serves as the Chief Prevention uh, for the Ohio Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services. She manages policies, planning, public engagement, and workforce development for a statewide prevention and problem gambling services system of care. Her focus since early 2021 has been as a lead for bringing the 988 suicide prevention lifeline into Ohio. Stacy has 20 plus years in systems building initiatives with for-profit, nonprofit, and governmental entities. She worked with the Ohio Association of County Behavior Health Authorities on advocacy, outreach, grants, and senior services, including a white paper on Ohio's adult care facilities. Stacey is Ohio Certified Prevention Consultant and Master Trainer in Healthy Ideas. She has a master's in public administration and uh, bachelor's in communications from West Liberty University. And she has served six years on city council in White Hall, Ohio. So without further ado, Stacey, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Jessica. I also don't want to leave out Ohio University. That's where I received my master's and um, go Bobcats. So with that, I will share my screen. Jessica mentioned that um, I started, you know, this particular, I, at the time I didn't think it was going to be a, as large of a chunk of, you know, what, what is a career path um, as it's become. With the launch of 988, it's a catalyst for crisis care transformation across the country, um, where Ohio began specific to 988 about 15 months ago, the work to transform and improve our crisis care system began several years ago uh, with the leadership of Governor Mike DeWine. There are our session objectives, which you would have all received in advance. Um, this quote was from the governor and also in the in, uh, Recovery Ohio initial report. Governor DeWine has, has put a huge focus on mental health, on suicide prevention and addiction issues. Um, and we could update this slide at this point with some of the 
comments, quotes that came out of uh, the State of the State Address, where he spent quite a bit of time, probably, I believe I've worked for six governors so far. Um, he's spoken more about mental health and addiction issues and suicide prevention than any governor uh, over the last 20, 20 plus years, as I had in my bio. At some point, you'd stop saying how many years, you just add a plus at the end. So it's been 20 plus years. Today, we'll be talking about our uh, crisis continuum within the state. 988 is one of those entry points. Crisis call centers are an entry point. Your campus wellness centers are an entry point. Uh, we know that as you look at this graphic, the green circle, Ohioans will enter and exit the circle at any point along the way. Um, our goal is to connect with them in whatever way that occurs to respond to their needs, whether that be a crisis stabilization center, whether that be sending out mobile response, uh, whether it's for adult or youth. And sorry, making sure that wasn't related to this presentation. And then to stabilize that individual in the community. And again, that might mean um, ongoing um, teletherapy. It might mean ongoing outpatient services and support that individual to thrive in the community. The vision for transforming Ohio's crisis care system is visible and accessible crisis continuum of services. We want these supports to be person-centered and quality-driven. Nothing about us without us is not just a quote in the work that we do within the Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services. And we know it's not you know, just a, a quote, an idiom in the work that you do. Um, we don't take lightly building this crisis care system. Um, and at every step of the way, we have individuals with lived experience, family members, and advocates for the system. And then the third bullet there under vision, ensuring people are stabilized and thriving in the community. What does that look like? In our crisis task force, work, we are utilizing these three buckets, which you saw in the previous graphic. 988 planning and 988 implementation are definitely a cornerstone to the connect piece for this crisis system of care. But they're not the only, um, they're not the only stone in that structure, in that foundation. We started an Ohio care line shortly after COVID began for emotional response. And we will continue the Ohio Care Line uh, for emotional support because we, we don't want to say that we're adding 988 for crisis care for behavioral health issues and take things away. We want Ohioans to be able to access care for a crisis, um, to, to be able to reach out in the ways that they are comfortable with. And that means if you're in Athens County, um, if you're on campus, you might be used to going to the wellness center or reaching out to the wellness center. If you're um, in a rural area in Athens County, you might be used to reaching out to health recovery services. You might be using the crisis text line. If you're a younger person, um, you could call Ohio Care Line for emotional support. And then the other elements of what that connection might be. Respond, mentioned that a little bit. That's mobile response. And there is an evidence-based model um, that the state is supporting under the heading of Ohio RISE. And that's called mobile response stabilization services, specifically for youth. There's mobile response for adults of all ages. Um, and then we're working very, very closely with first responders, uh, and our 911s across the state of Ohio. Again, stabilizing the individual, whether that be crisis stabilization, uh, residential services, and helping them thrive in an ongoing stable uh, system. 
So 988 is building on the strong foundation in Ohio. Can it be stronger? Yes. Can we make it? Can we enhance those services? Absolutely. But it is a three-digit number replacing the 1-800-273-8255 National Suicide Prevention Lifeline number. If someone is used to calling the 10-digit number, that'll still be there. But over time, we expect 988 to become as ubiquitous as 911 is now. <clears throat> it took a few decades for 911 to become so commonplace. That's what we look forward to with 988. And we're going to talk more about the rollout of 988 um, through this presentation. There has been, um, as of October of 20, a new federal law that requires the states to pass uh, legislation if it's needed or just to bring up 988 in the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. It has been here in Ohio, what we shorthandedly call the NSPL for the lifeline. When we started this work, we had 12 Ohio lifeline centers. They're approved by SAMHSA and the national vendor. Today we have 19. Um, we've you know, built those uh, numbers up over the past, as I said, 15 months. We wanna make sure that we're ready for this go live, which is scheduled for July 16th of this year, just a, just a few months away at this point. 988 is not just for suicide prevention, it is for suicide prevention, mental health, and crisis uh, related to addiction issues. If someone is actively overdosing, if someone is holding a gun to their heads or someone else's head, or has a knife in hand and thinking about hurting themselves that way, those are not 988 calls. Those are 911 calls. So when there's a danger to life and limb, that's still a 911 call. When someone is in an emotional crisis related to suicide prevention, mental health, or addiction, that's when we want folks to start calling 988. And we'll be saying more about that. I'm not going to go through all of this. Um, this is where SAMHSA's vision is for the federal legislation to enact 988 as a three-digit number, just like 911. Um, but for the specific audience, we know, well, depending on how old you are, you might know, decades ago, no one talked about mental health issues. No one talked about addiction issues um, and suicide. I would, you know, was a dirty little secret, and to some extent, it still is. Uh, county coroners, you know, may or may not put that on a death certificate. Um, folks may or may not talk about it. Same thing still with mental health or a drug overdose. We've come so far, though, in being able to talk about behavioral health issues to have it be. The first thing that kicked off the state of the state address is a breathtaking change. I've been working in um, stigma reduction around behavior health issues for the last couple decades, uh, and we've never seen you know the dramatic changes that we see now. But then we also have very public figures, actors, you know, sports figures, um, folks with a uh, a platform on a national level who are starting to talk about behavioral health issues and suicide and suicide prevention. So that helps move us along this path. The federal government and SAMHSA's vision for 988 is taking all of that into account. Um, I'd like to point out, you know, there, there have been, you see that third bullet that mentions reducing deadly gaps in a fragmented behavioral health crisis care system by ensuring that Lifeline and 988 centers are in touch with those crisis services in their communities. We'll talk more about how that will happen. To relieve emergency room boarding. Most of you have probably heard one of those stories. Um, they often come from Florida or New York where someone 
in a suicidal crisis went to an emergency room and because there was no psychiatric bed available, spent days there, not just hours, but days in an emergency room waiting for a psychiatric bed. When 988 is active and working the way it should, we shouldn't have anyone sitting in an emergency room, boarded, quote unquote, in an emergency room, waiting for a bed. We want to serve those folks in the communities, in a psychiatric hospital, in a private facility, as often as we possibly can. That last bullet references stigma. Stigma is still a part of everything we do in the behavioral health world, but it is a little bit less, a little bit smaller than it used to be. This graphic is demonstrating you know, what this looks like in action. It's actually borrowed from the state of Arizona, but it will look very much like this in Ohio as well. With a person in crisis making that phone call, it could also be a chat or a text. And about 80% of those crisis calls are reserved on the phone. They don't require a mobile response, but we know that about 20% of them do. So whether that be a youth or adult, there may be uh, behavioral health mobile response dispatched. Um, in some cases, as I mentioned, 911 may still have to be brought back in the picture. If that person calls 988, but he or she is actively dangerous to themselves or others, it's still a 911 call. And a 988 call center would then actively with a warm handoff, transfer that individual back to 911. Crisis facilities, in other words, crisis stabilization units, um, crisis centers, they might be drop-in centers, they might be emergency departments, they might be uh, psychiatric hospitals. The light blue box that was demonstrating you know, what we're trying to reduce as much as possible jails, emergency departments, inpatient stays. The planning process began, as I've mentioned a couple of times, February of 21. All of these groups were part of that planning process. Um, it's been incredibly inclusive, incredibly um, diverse and expansive across the state of Ohio. We've also had folks at the national level with us every step of the way. Um, We've had representation from the Ohio General Assembly and the governor's administration. You'll see Suicide Prevention Foundation, Ohio Citizen Advocates for Addiction Recovery, uh, Equitas, Equality Ohio. Um, those groups have represented LGBTQIA plus perspectives, health plans, telecom, um, all of these, and certainly the behavioral health system of care, our alcohol, drug, and mental health boards, and our certified behavioral health providers across the state, the Lifeline call centers themselves, and some uh, representation of other call centers and call lines. We had a, an initial requirement to submit a draft plan. Um, you can see from this timeline, the plan was due in September of 21, and then a final version was due just this past January. We performed that work. Um, it was extensive and submitted our 75 or so um, page document that laid out step by step with goals and strategies, objectives on how we would implement this um, 988 network across the state of Ohio to support Ohioans in crisis. And focus groups were held with people, for people with lived experience, um, LGBTQIA+, African-American groups, um, people, uh, family members. Uh, six focus groups total met, um, reviewed elements of the plan, commented, and you know, nothing was written um, into the plan that wasn't supported from the perspective of people that could be impacted.
by the work of the 988 system and Ohio's crisis care system. Another look at timeline. You'll see that this one goes into June of 2025. It's really just the tip of the iceberg. As I've said, decades for 911, we know that 988 will be around for that same time frame. Um, and so much of the work to be done still needs to be done. It just launches this coming July. We will continue intensively working on the 988 system over the next 12 months from July 1st, 22 on. But uh, so many elements of it need to be phased in. And it's not just Ohio's work that needs phased in. It's also at the national level. And we'll talk more about that as we make um, decisions and look at best practices, standards, and certification. All of the work that needs to be done in Ohio is also being looked at across the country, interfaced with, with 911. That's another large piece of the work to ensure uh, a stable, quality crisis care system. Our priorities. Number one has been building system capacity. Really, the work over the past year to 15 months has all been about capacity. As I said, we've grown from 12 to 19 lifeline centers. Um, those centers, we'll talk a little bit more about funding soon, but they, they were funded on a piecemeal basis. Um, the Alcohol Drug Mental Health Boards have provided funding for the lifeline centers. Some of those funds came from the state, from the federal government. Um, life, lifeline centers have been funded by United Way. They've been funded by private foundations. Um, it's been a you know, putting together a puzzle. As of just two months ago, uh, the, the state has determined that we would take over the funding of Lifeline approved call centers. So we've started to put capacity building funds into the community um, just a couple months ago. The plan was determined prior to that. Um, but we know that as the word gets out about 988, we will need more capacity to take on those calls, chats, chats, and texts. And again, we will talk more about that as we get further into the slide. Slides. Um, number two has been about training, quality, standard certification. Um, we work with the OSU College of Social Work. And this is actually work that began with the Ohio Care Line. There's an extensive array of free on-demand crisis call center trainings already online. Anyone can take them. Um, any call center can take advantage of them, not just the 988 centers, but any call center around the state. Uh, any behavioral health professional could also take those. There are also live webinars listed there and those are available to anyone, and those have continuing education with them. And then that third bucket is about technology. It's about data. We have a community of practice that started to meet specifically for the Lifeline call centers. Um, they'll be meeting monthly. They'll be looking at the data elements that need to be collected, how best to collect those, um, you know, what that analysis process will look like, how we can give that data back to the call centers, um, and what are those best practices and technology we need to have in place, again, for the best quality system. All of that will not be determined in two months. All of that will not be determined in one year. We know that that is going to be an ongoing process with 911. They currently have a bill in the Ohio legislator in the Ohio legislature called the Next Gen 911 bill. Uh, there have been several of those. They've they've occurred, you know, over um, a number of decades time. We're in the very beginning of this for 988. So how does the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline work now? There's been um, a you know, a big focus on this in the state of Ohio as we've looked at our implementation planning. Um, I have to, you know, just put it out there at the state level, 
we were not engaged. We were not involved in National Suicide Prevention Lifeline call centers. Our focus on that just began last um, February. So we had to do a landscape analysis. Um, we had to do a needs assessment to see where we are. At the national level, it was reported that there were 70 to 80,000 calls coming into, a, I'm sorry, being placed from Ohioans and coming back to Ohio. Um, there were additional calls that were being placed by Ohioans and going out to states all over the country that were backup centers. So Ohio's capacity for the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline calls, chats, chats, and texts was not where it needed to be when we started. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, though, was up and running. Those folks that made those calls, chats, and texts, um, someone responded, someone picked up that call, and they were given responses but I would say they were not the ideal responses that we're working towards. They were not always the evidence-based responses that we're working towards. Um, it was somewhat of a loose system of call centers across the country. Again, that's not where we're heading. This map of the state of Ohio is showing where we were, and then as of April 1st, where we are now. We only had 45 counties with primary coverage for the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. So I just said that a lot of the lifeline calls were leaving our state. That was why. If you lived in 43, if you lived in one of 43 counties, chances are your call, chat, or text went somewhere else in the country um, if it came from one of those other counties. Uh, we did have capacity for the 45 counties. But as of April 1st, all 88 counties in Ohio are covered. There's also um, secondary coverage. There's primary, there's secondary coverage for all 88 counties. And we have a backup call center. Uh, Talbert House in Cincinnati is doing statewide backup for the whole state of Ohio. So it's a three level safety net. It's already you know, much stronger much more stable than anything we had for the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline prior to April 1st. So that's part of that work that we're putting in place for the launch of 988. A lot of work has gone into understanding the costs. Um, I mentioned how many calls coming into Ohio, how many calls being placed. And every time I say calls, I'm probably talking calls, chats, and texts being placed from Ohioans. The look at the national level was uh, supplemented by a very intensive look at that at the state level. And what did we think human behavior would look like as we go into the next year and beyond? Um, in order to further study that, we had an actuarial firm engaged. Our Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services partnered with the Department of Insurance. They have actuaries you know, on speed dial. Um, so we were able to engage with one of those firms and they did an assessment of what human behavior will likely look like in the next year and beyond. Based on their assessment and based on the landscape analysis, we were able to determine the best estimate of what the costs might be as we move through the first five years of 988 implementation. So we're currently in that first six months. You see the, the top yellow arrow. Um, we're investing 6.177 million into capacity building and technology and creating a resource directory now during this first six months. Year one, which begins on July 1st, is funded with an additional almost $15 million. And all of these funds that have been identified to support the 988 system for the first few years, um, I'm sorry, for the first 18 months, this six months plus the next 12 months, those are federal funds. 
There are federal funds that have flowed through to the Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services. And Director Lori Chris has said, you know, we will support this system. The state of Ohio will support this system. Um, years two through five are what we'll be looking for from a sustainable funding plan uh, moving forward. It would be, you know, years two through, um, again, decades to come. Um, we have a number of directions from a funding standpoint to go. Um, we have actually more, more possibilities than, than this. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of work going on with the Ohio General Assembly to determine a sustainable funding structure. Um, we do have a bill with the Ohio, <clears throat> Ohio General Assembly, and that is State Representative Gail Pavliga. Um, she has House Bill 468, and it has passed through the House and will be um, considered by the Senate. Excuse me. That bill establishes the Department, Ohio Mental Health and Addiction Services, um, as the administrative authority for 988, um, gives the department the ability to hire an administrator. It does not include any sustainable funding at this point. So again, we're working with the General Assembly to determine you know, the best course for a sustainable funding plan. Also, you know, with the, with the, um, the state system and um, knowing that we have a biennial budget upcoming with Medicaid, um, there are a number of possibilities. And you notice the telecom firms were engaged on the 988 planning committee. That's because a number of states have used telecom fees to fund 988 and some of the services in some cases related to 988. Um, we don't know what that'll look like in Ohio yet, <clears throat> but we're actively engaged along with so many of our partners so many of the stakeholder organizations have been actively involved um, advocating for sustainable funding for 988. A few slides on key messaging. So I am, you may think I've uh, tap danced around this a little bit, and that may be true. At this point, SAMHSA, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline are all strongly encouraging states to educate crisis system partners not to launch a large statewide media campaign to get the word out about 988. We want to make sure that partners like all of you are aware that it's coming, understand what it is. Um, you know, understand the impact that we expect that it will have, but probably not to buy billboards, not to launch a social media campaign. We want to make sure that our crisis care partners are on board, and we want to think of um, the July 16th as somewhat of a soft launch. Folks will call 988. They'll call chat and text. And we'll be ready for that. But do we want a 200% increase in calls, a 300% increase in calls? Um, not really. The actuaries looked at about a 65% increase in calls, chats, and texts for that first year, an additional 25% for the second year, and around 15% additional every year, uh, you know, potentially forevermore. Um, that's where our uh, estimates fall. So let me get back to this particular slide. We want to make sure that all of you understand that help will be available and it's okay to ask for help with regard to calling 988. We want to be able to talk about it. What is it? As I said, if it's a suicide crisis, mental health or addiction, Call 988. If it's danger to life and limb, if it means life or death, call 911. We want our crisis care partners to understand what will happen next. You know, there may be mobile response. 
there may be an appointment set up and a warm handoff for someone for outpatient services. Um, that mobile response may lead to crisis stabilization and so on. The work at the national level on what overall marketing for 988 will look like is in its infancy stages. Um, these sample logos, I dropped them in here just so you could see what they might look like, but they're still, I mean, they just came out last week. That's how, that's what the timing looks like when we talk about general um, public marketing. It is a transformative change. It is, uh, there's a catalytic converter on the car. I don't know what that means, um, but catalyst is the kind of change, a catalytic change in terms of our crisis care system being pushed by 988. You'll have access to these slides. Um, this is some of that basic information that we do encourage you to share with all of your partners, um, primarily in the education system, in the behavioral health systems, um, your wellness centers, and so on. We've already reviewed all of this. You'll see this pre-July and post-July. Notice that very first bullet, hold off promoting use of 988, continue to use the 1-800, the 10-digit number, and that is up until July, up until July 16th. Um, we don't want a lot, we don't want hundreds of thousands of folks calling 988 now. It won't be turned on now. Um, most providers have made the switch. You can try it after this webinar. Go ahead and, and call 988. If you have Verizon, Sprint, T-Mobile, it probably is on and working for you. But so many Ohioans do not. They have you know, pay-as-you-go phones. Um, they have other phones that are not on the major carriers and it will not be on for them yet. Share basic information. We encourage that. Um, Within your crisis care centers, within your wellness centers, feel free to talk about 988 to put up any um, signage that becomes available after July 16th. And how will you talk about it? Well, partnering with local national champions. And that's going to be different for um, you know, everybody participating today. Engaging storytellers. I was emphasizing how our advocacy partners have been so valuable so far, and we know that they'll continue to be valuable. And that includes all of you. How can we ensure this is the best possible crisis system um, that will benefit everyone, everyone that it needs to benefit in the state of Ohio? So that means young people on campus, it means staff, um, it means K through 12 education, Ohio ones across the lifespan and working with media. And we are keeping media briefed and they're getting the same message. They will not be seeing a national media campaign uh, anytime soon around 988. The system needs to be tested. We need to gather data. We need to troubleshoot over the coming months. Social media. And what do these next steps look like? Checking time again. Okay. We want to do what we're doing today. Educate groups that will help get the word out about 988 and what it means. Um, continuing to work with the General Assembly, continuing to focus on best practices, standards, certification related to call, crisis call centers, focusing on that sustainability uh, element in terms of funding in order to support the resources needed across the crisis care system, working with 911 and the public service answering points all across the state of Ohio, hiring um, staff. Let me talk for a minute about the resource directory. How will all of the crisis call centers know where to send someone who calls in? Um, this has been a huge focus of our work to date. There will be 
and a free online crisis services, uh, behavioral health crisis services resource directory. We actually had an RFP posted and it's been awarded, although we can't announce who received it yet because there's a, a funding process going on at the state level. Um, but a vendor will be bringing up an online resource directory that will indicate what counties a particular um, service is serving. Um, it will be accessible by all the crisis call centers, not just the 988 call centers, um, all crisis call centers across the state, the behavioral health service system, campuses, colleges, universities, anyone in the state will be able to go online and use this resource directory. Only people with accounts will be able to submit updates in terms of you know, their particular, if you're a behavioral health provider, you'll have an account in order to keep your listing accurate. You know, what's the number? What's the website? Um, who do you call for an appointment? That kind of thing. Is there a different after hours number and so on? Um, that resource directory, as I said, it's online. So if someone is out of their service area because of the area code that they have on their phones, in other words, that call could end up, I'm a student from Florida and my phone has a Florida area code. When that student makes a 988 call, that call will go to Florida. So how does the person in Florida know what resource to use to help that student? They will have access to the online resource directory, as will everyone else. Um, it would go to a National Suicide Prevention Lifeline call center in Florida. That call specialist will engage that person calling, um, triage their needs, go to the directory and, and say, oh, okay, they're at Akron University in Summit County. They need mobile response. And here's the mobile response provider for that community. Um, or here's the crisis stabilization center for that community. Uh, we anticipate that being um, up and operative within three to four months of July 16th. As I said, we, we can't even announce the vendor yet. But that's a very significant piece of, of ensuring this quality system. And the last slide is just some more background information, a little bit about the messaging campaign. Um, you may find aligning the field around the 988 messaging framework valuable and my email. And with that, I will unshare. Well, thank you so much, Stacy, for that. Um very vital overview of the 988 system and the current system to the new system, as well as other very important information about the historical aspect of the you know, suicide prevention hotline and what that's going to look like here in Ohio um, over the course of the next couple of months. Um, we do already have a number of questions that are pending in the question and answer, um, as well as chat function. And I just want to encourage Everyone, if you've not had the opportunity in, to share what organization or uh, campus community you may be joining us from, um, we would certainly like to know that information if you're comfortable in sharing that in the chat, as well as any questions that you may have for, uh, for Stacy. Stacy, we have a number, number of campuses that are already joining us. We have Bowling Green University, Capitol, Mercy, Mount St. Joseph, and I'm sure many, many more um, who will want to know, um, again, how this will um, look like the implementation uh, along with their campus. And so the, the first question um, that I will scroll to, it actually came, um, let's pull it up here. Very early on in the presentation, uh, I believe around the second slide, and it's regarding the boarding time that you, you spoke about. Um, and the question is really wanting more or additional information about psychiatric beds available as part of 988. And if you can expand more about reducing boarding time. 
Sure. One of the pieces that we had in the request for proposals for the resource directory was that <clears throat> whoever ends up creating the online resource directory will connect to the open beds registry. And the open beds registry is a fairly new initiative of our state department. Um, and it's expanding across the state of Ohio so that if someone needs a psychiatric bed or um, any other type of residential um, stay, there will th this registry is in place so that in this case, the crisis call center where that bed is available and the closest bed available to a particular community. Um, the goal there, again, not to have someone spending hours, if not days. Um, frankly, I didn't know what boarding meant. Uh, when I attended one of the early, early crisis meetings and someone just said, you know, we don't want patients boarding, uh, which did not have, you know, a particular unique definition related to crisis care in my mind. I certainly know what it means now. And um, obviously I know a lot of you do as well. So that is one of those pieces that we, you know, we have to get away from that. That's, it's horrible. Um, think of it, whether it's you, a family member, a child, um, that individual in a suicidal crisis needs help immediately not to hang out in uh, an emergency department. I've talked to emergency department physicians myself um, and they've said, I mean, they've been hesitant to admit, but even in Ohio, I've heard of a couple cases where um, people have boarded in an ED for a couple days. So it's not just New York and Florida and I'll apologize for picking on them, um, but we have had that situation in our own state. We, so um, in general, the, psych, the six psychiatric hospitals, but then Ohio has, I don't know, a number of our, our private psychiatric hospitals. There's quite a few of them. And the goal would be um, the least restrictive environment as it always is for anyone with a behavioral health crisis issue. Certainly, and, and thank you for that response, Stacy. The next question um, really is around the role of higher education and the crisis response system of care. Um, and it really is, how do you suggest um, that students, staff, and faculty, um, how can they be best supported in the implementation of 988? You know, when I, as I was thinking about this presentation, I was thinking, I'm, I'm certainly not coming to all of you with a, uh, with a template. Um, you know, this is what you need. And, take this and build this on your campus because I don't think it's a one size fits all at all. Um, we have the Rise and Thrive, which was funded with uh, governor's education and relief funding. As I mentioned, we do work with the Department of Higher Education. The goal of all that is to ensure that you have the service array that you need on campus. And if you don't, that you have developed community partnerships with the behavioral health care system off campus and have those connections in place. From a template standpoint, I think that's all you know, I can bring to you at this point. Um, it's going to look different. It's going to look different from each of your systems. Um, if you have something like 24-hour stabilization on your campuses, then we wanna make sure that that information ends up in our resource directory. We wanna make sure that you know, a student from, I think Jessica said capital, that a student from capital knows, first of all, the call center finds out that that's a student from capital. You know, it's, um, it's in Franklin County. This is a crisis stabilization center for Franklin County. That's how it would be identified in the resource directory. Um, youth or adult, or adult mobile response then might, may come into play. But that is, as I said, a, a connecting point. So I, I know that's a lot of 
Um, they're, they're all various elements of the system. I'll also add one more thing as I was pulling this all together, and that is continued work with all of you, you know, a, a work group on, is there a template? I don't know. I'm not saying that there is, but are there identified best practices? First of all, that we could kind of hinge this work on from a national level. Um, and then how do we modify those for Ohio, assuming they even exist? And I would say, you know, from the Ohio MHAS perspective, we'd be happy to work with you more on what those best practices look like and how can we ensure that that's in place with the 988 system. And is it going to be ready to go on July 16th? Um, highly unlikely, which is why we're trying to look at this, you know, this year of a soft launch so that July 16th of 2023, everything should be in place, except maybe technology. I also didn't mention geolocation. Uh, we were talking about area codes. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline has not turned on geolocation yet because the FCC hasn't given permission for geolocation the NSPL, the 10 digit number or 988. It'll likely come soon, but uh, we can't control what year and what month. Um, it's looking like it might happen by the end of 23. But until then, the system that is being built that will be in place is based on area codes and a very um, up-to-date resource directory. And thank you for that response. And I think that almost answers the next question about the intersection of the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline with the crisis text line. Uh, but maybe you may have some more or additional information that you can add if there is any intersection with that. Vibrant Emotional Health manages the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline and, and also on behalf of SAMHSA. And they are in talks with the crisis text line. Uh, what will happen in Ohio is, as I said, we aren't taking anything away. Any part of the safety net that exists now will remain. So if you're one of the 35,000 or so folks that have used the crisis text line in Ohio, it will be there. It will be there for you. It will be there for those, those individuals. Um, 988 will become a textable number on July 16th. Um, so that will be an additional opportunity and hopefully it will engage even more people into texting for help because they're more comfortable with that. So there's a, another question that came in and I know you mentioned in the presentation that um, not for all providers and plans um, is this 988 on as of now and will be on July 16th. But the question really is regarding um, perhaps pay phones or like the campus emergency phones. Um, can the expectation be that those phones will also kind of be brought up to speed on the July 16th date? I don't know what the technology is behind those phones. I mean, if they're, if it's a phone that only goes to, I mean, I'm picturing a phone in a parking garage for emergency. If that only goes to campus police, then I don't know that 988 would, you know, would work for that. But it, um, yeah, that's a good question. If there's a provider, you know, like a Verizon behind, behind that phone system, then yes, it would absolutely work. And that also includes, you know, all those other pay-as-you-go phones and so on are based on some kind of cell service. It might be Cincinnati Bell, you know, it might be um, any of the, once the bells broke up, there became hundreds, if not thousands of phone companies. Those are the ones that won't get turned on until July 16th because the federal government has said, do it. Um, all of those will definitely become active for 988 at that point. If it's a kind of a closed line, not a closed line, it's a closed system um, on a particular campus, then no, I don't think it would reach that. Thank you for that. And I think we have time for one last question. 
And this question, uh, Stacy, speaks to also something that you addressed or did share briefly in your presentation um, about individuals who was involved in the process. Um, and so it says, how have individuals with lived experience of mental illness been involved in the development of this rollout? It's a great question. Um, we, we've had we've had folks from NAMI, we've had NAMI Ohio on all of the planning committees, um, the current Connect Committee. Once the planning committee went away, then we um, transitioned to a Connect group, which was not just 988, but all of crisis call centers engaged. Uh, Luke Russell from NAMI Ohio has been involved every step of the way. We've also had representatives from NAMIs around the state, and those individuals have been people with lived experience. Um, we've had, as I said, we've had representatives from the LGBTQIA plus community. We've had folks representing African-American communities who are also people with lived experience. So, and not just mental health, but addiction issues um, and suicide for themselves and um, for family members. The Ohio Suicide Prevention Foundation Family Advocacy Group. And those are individuals who have either lost someone due to suicide um, or had attempts in themselves or their family members. It has been, broadly inclusive to try to ensure that we had the perspectives of the people who would be most uh, benefit, who would most benefit from a 988 line and their family members. Thank you for that response. And with that being said, uh, we're gonna go ahead and close out. We are at time. And I just wanna thank you again, Stacy, for that very uh, informative presentation on what the 988 implementation will look like here for the state of Ohio. And um, there, the PowerPoint slides will be disseminated. And again, this video uh, presentation was recorded and will be made available via our YouTube channel at a later date. Um, and again, if you are interested in claiming CE credits for today, one last time that code for today's session is 36 frig. That's 36-F-R-I-G. Again, Stacy, thank you so much for your time and for bringing that very vital information to Ohio's campus stakeholders and community organizations. Thank you everybody for your time. Mm -hmm.